So I'm a little nervous being up here, but I'm glad you chose me. So that means your desire was stronger than your resistance. If your fear had been the most dominant, we would not have seen you. So your desire is more dominant than your fear. So the calling, you see what we're getting at? You're just always wanting to watch that balance. Soothe yourself, talk the fear down. Nothing serious going on here. <laughs> okay. So I've been working to create, quote unquote, the job of my dreams. I went back to graduate school and got a master's in astrophysics. And I've been trying to create this, something just where I love what I do. I'm working with people that love what they do where so the job of your dreams given what you've heard us talk about here the job of your dreams keeps expanding yes because you can't stall out so it's open-ended yes the ideas keep flowing yes you get to dovetail with other brilliant people yes. in a collaborative fashion where great ideas can really hatch we can see why you'd call that the job of your dreams we'd call it the most realistic thing that we've ever heard from anyone yeah doesn't feel like a dream it feels like a sure thing to us but in the process I can't see myself there what I feel is I feel anxious well, then don't try to force it because if you try to see yourself there and can't then you practice not being able to see yourself there so you got to back off from it a little bit and be more general about it so what can you see I can see the ideas I mean I can see the beauty I'm fascinated by the beauty of the universe and what's what's okay. possible. So here's the thing. Remember, step one, you already launched it. You don't have to do that again. You already identified what the job of your dreams is. Step one is done. So you don't have to go back and revisit that. So now step three is what you got to do. Focusing on the beauty of the universe. Is that easy for you? Oh. If that comes easy to you, then just do that. This is so fascinating. This is so amazing. This is so incredible. Look at the synchronicity of all of this. All you have to do is be in the receptive mode and the job of your dreams will come into your experience. At the same time, I think of all things that I should be doing, you know, sending resumes out, talking to people, networking, following up on things that I haven't followed up on. Have you been feel, doing that? Huh? Have you been doing some of that? I've been doing some, but not Has as it much. working out? <laughs> I feel stuck. <laughs> There are those who say, if you throw enough mud on the wall, some of it will <laughs> stick. And we say, yes, but it always makes a big mess. <laughs> what you want to do is think about why do you want this? That's what we'd like to hear from you. Why do you want this? Why do you want this job of your dreams? What is it about it that turns you on? It's hard to explain. It's just the energy of seeing things as they are. It's like I, I've... But because I love the feeling of expansive thought and I love getting to look at something differently than most others can see it. I love the mind expansion that is required in this. I love the free flowing of thought around it. I love the bigness of it. I love the massiveness of it. I love the wholeness of it. I love the perfection of it. I love the wonder of it. I love the amazement of it. I love the co-creative genius of it. I love the unknown of it. Yeah, and something else comes up. Yes. It's a connection. It's when you see these things, I don't know how to explain it, but when you see these things in the well, universe. Well, we do. <laughs> it's what we're talking about. That's that alignment. That's what that alignment is. That's that feeling of seeing the world through the eyes of source, just catching glimpses of the way it all works, of the way creation happens. How do you think all of this came into being exactly in the same way that we're trying to help you get a car in your garage? It's exactly the same process. All of these planets spinning in their orbit in perfect proximity to each other and beyond and beyond and beyond and beyond and beyond. All of that thought vibration that with attention to it became actualized and with attention to it became actualized in a rhythm of perfection. Everything always working out to perfection, you see. It's no wonder that it's thrilling to you to gaze in the direction of that, to look upward and outward and onward. It's no wonder that that's thrilling to you, you see. And what feels bad to you is when you come back from all of that and try to figure <laughs> out how to put a resume together. 
Well, it's because it's too soon for that. Let the wonder of all of that keep inspiring you. Let it build within you until what comes across in your resume, you'll be so turned in, tapped in, turned on that what will come across is something that's so powerful that it will be undeniable. You'll present your credentials. You'll let them know that you had the stamina and the wherewithal to go to school and get the degree and learn what you needed to learn. You've got the basics, but it's not the basics that ever carry anyone to greatness. It's the alignment that carries someone to greatness. Now, maybe the basics are necessary. We really don't think that they are, but in your world, let's say that the basics are necessary and you've got those. And so now you've got the basics, but now you've got something far more. Look at the athletes out on the ball court. Look at them. They're equal height, most of them in equal weight, and they've got equal muscle capacity. But what makes the difference between those that have that eye hand coordination? What makes the difference between those that are inspired, those that are so tuned in that they can tell what somebody else is going to do? Those that see the big picture that are looking for broader view, that know exactly where they need to be and where they want to be in the rhythm of what's going on. In other words, it's far more than just the basics. They've gone into alignment. They're using the leverage of energy that creates worlds. And that's what's flowing through them, you see. So if you will allow yourself to dream more and to feel the fullness of all of that longer, rather than doing more of that mundane stuff that everybody thinks that they need to do to jump through the hoops. So you allow yourself to rise above the fray so that you are in love with the universe and all of its possibilities. Then that will come across in the way that you interview and the way that you connect and the way that you rendezvous with others possibilities. Science is so interesting. You know why it moves so slowly because everybody thinks everybody has to agree on everything. So you take the slowest, minds and you drag them along with the fastest <laughs> minds everybody has to agree but it's always those that were thinking outside the box that figured everything out look at them all through history Many of them were put in jail. They were so weird because they were not willing to follow. Well, those days are gone. Nobody's going to jail you. The worst thing that could happen to you is that they might misunderstand you, but they will revere you if you allow your mind to soar in the way that you have the potential of it soaring. So you've got the basics, you've got the credentials, you're in the game. Now let yourself dream into that place of feeling wonderful. And then the words that flow forth from you are, I was born for this. I've got this intuitive knowing. My mind takes me places that I've never been before. The idea of understanding this expanding universe, things occur to me. <sighs> it is so exhilarating when you hook in with that broader perspective. And every single invention, every single understanding, concept, mathematics, everything that has ever come into this physical world has come by one person who stood apart, who didn't do the mundane stuff that everybody else was doing, who stopped feeling guilty about jumping through the hoops that everybody was jumping through and allowed themselves to be for a longer period of time in that atmosphere of belief and understanding. And then the thoughts begin to flow in a big, big way. And you will never be happy under any other conditions. You got to go there. We always enjoy visiting with people who have called themselves creative. You all are, no matter what your endeavor, but those in music or those in art or those in science who have felt what it feels like, those in sports, biggest population, who feel what it feels like to be in that zone, who know what it feels like as you just catch glimpses of that alignment and in that aligned state, you turn your attention toward something of interest to you and you see it open in a whole new understanding. And if you don't need to scamper and get confirmation from others who aren't there, who aren't in that receiving mode, oh, that's why that calls you. You want to be in the receiving mode that nobody else has received. You want to be in the receiving mode that nobody else has received. You're not a regurgitator. You're a creator. Yeah. Um, I have a question though. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did get a little carried away. <laughs> so I agree with everything you say, except there's one thing that kind of sticks with me. When you say you have the credentials, when I talk to people in the field, I have a master's right now. And they're like, well, you don't have a PhD. You don't have a postdoc. There are all these hoops that people tell me, well, we can't consider you because of these reasons. You know, or you don't have this programming experience or whatever it happens to be. And then I get stuck because I'm like, well... Then you're talking to them too soon. You're talking to them too soon. When you're in that state of alignment, you carry a credential with you, a vibrational credential. Look at the greats. What 
kind of credentials did Galileo have? What kind of credentials? Your credentials are the way you mundaneize yourselves. Your credentials are the way you standardize yourselves. Your credentials are the way you compare yourselves in the action orientation. You're talking about inspiration. You're talking about alignment. Do you want to be part of the system that is requiring you to jump through hoops? Or do you want to tap into the genius of the universe and make something big happen? Esther and Jerry read a book a few years ago, stuck in their minds. It was a man who was talking about travel and how to make travel easy. And he was talking about how to interact with airlines and how to interact with hotels and so forth. And he said, if you ask someone to do something, make sure that they have the power to give it to you. Otherwise you're just wasting your words. You sort of get that. Ask somebody that has the power to make the water hotter in your room and so on. Otherwise it's just a waste of time. So we'd like to reflect that to you by saying, when you ask those who are willing to play in the world of mundaneness to give you your certificates, then you've sort of relegated yourself to a different game than you want to play in. And we think that's what's grinding at you because we don't believe that if you were a basketball player that you'd go and you'd say, I've never played, but I would like to play in the NBA and expect to be able to play. But that's not what's going on here. You have far more vibrational credentials than you are giving yourself credit and you're letting someone else that doesn't understand how to feel who you really are in relationship to what you really want. This is the thing that we're saying to all of you all of the time. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for accreditation in all the wrong places. You're looking for it from other humans who cannot give it to you. Go to your source and your source will give it to you. You're looking for confidence. You're looking for clarity. You're looking for stamina. You're looking for vitality. You're looking for genius. You're looking for information. You're not going to find it there with them. They're moving paper clips around. That's their job. 